Hi, everyone. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to address the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. This decision stripped away the right to have a safe and legal abortion. Abortion is a basic health care need for the millions of people who become pregnant. Everyone should have the freedom to decide what's best for themselves and their families, including when it comes to ending a pregnancy. This decision has dire consequences for individual health and safety and could have harsh repercussions for other landmark decisions. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. Even if you live in a state where abortion rights are upheld, access to safe medical abortions shouldn't be determined by location, and it shouldn't be the privilege of a small few. You can help by donating to local abortion funds. To find out where to donate for each state, visit donationsforabortions.com. That's the number four. If you or someone you know needs help, or if you want to get more involved, here are five resources. One, Shout Your Abortion is a campaign to normalize abortion. Two, Don't Ban Equality is a campaign for companies to stand against abortion restrictions. Three, Abortion.cafe has information about where to find clinics. Four, PlanCPills.org provides early at-home abortion pills that you can keep in your medicine cabinet. And five, Choice.crd.co has a collection of these resources and more. I encourage you to speak up. Take care and spread the word. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Remember? <laughs> teeth are good. <laughs> you know what? I need I need these teeth to talk. Yeah, you need teeth to talk. Like you need teeth. You. It's hard to talk need, without teeth. Forget about a house or a home. Who cares about a home? What you need is good teeth. Good teeth? And you're set for life. Who needs shelter? <laughs> or food or clothing? Teeth. <laughs> I hate record like Mid wheezing, laughing because <laughs> <laughs> this is what people tune in for. Yeah, it's two it's seconds to like... in. Two seconds in, and you're already wheezing. <laughs> it's hear me losing my shit. <laughs> <laughs> Arthi, I I am so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I've had you know, an interesting couple of days. Yeah, so, so I I did let. The Instagram followers know that you had come across an unidentifiable gummy at the bottom of your purse. You have no idea what the dosage was. You don't know. (laughs) But you said. I truly thought it was a fruit gummy that my daughter (laughs) said. My my daughter carries all this. I'm like, this must be old. Must be a couple of years old. It's lying there. Oh, she must have put it in my purse. And one of them escaped from the bag. (laughs) So you thought, let me eat it? No, I was cleaning out. I was moving things from my old purse into my brand new purse. Ooh. And it's not ooh. Did you get the diamond studded Birkin? A $25,000 bag? No, or I'm more like Garcelle. I'm, I'm like more like Garcelle. I looked at all of them and then I found one, on, <laughs> you know, in Target that yeah. looked like the expensive ones and I got that. But yeah. um, essentially I was moving things out and I was like cleaning it out and I was like finding like safety pins and like old wrappers and you know how you have stuff in there yeah and I found a gummy and I was like oh gummy and I just popped it in and then 20 minutes later I was digging for food in the refrigerator and laughing out loud at Wolf Blitzer talking about Trump and I was like why am I laughing and that's when I hear that's when I realized oh wait oh okay I should sit still. <laughs> and that's what I did. Right. And wow. it was I was mixing gummies and medication. So it was like, you know, <laughs> at least I was more aware than um, Erica Janus. 
but you didn't tell Bella or or um oh my I god did I did not call Rena and tell her I definitely did not tell um you know uh Kyle so I know that the next time I meet with her Kyle is going to bring it up and just Well I wanted to know did it. you tell Bella and Harold, Harold? to get the fuck out of here <laughs> Yeah, Harold was trying to take the flowers out, which he shouldn't. <laughs> um, are you uh, like so exhausted by Beverly Hills already? I am. I'm what? exhausted by Bravosphere mm-hmm. in its entirety. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Atlanta doesn't seem to be moving much. Mm-hmm. I was so excited for Marlo to be back full time and all that. But it seems to have hit a snag. It's almost going back into the pandemic episodes of Atlanta where nothing is No, I actually love Atlanta right now. I'm having so much fun with Atlanta. I am. That's why I need to talk to you about it. Because I don't, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, here we go. Another event and nothing's happening. No. And nothing's happening. I just but, love like the silly shade, and I I but love. I have to say yeah. that Sonia is the first housewife ever who came into her first season and blended in seamlessly. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. she has done a good job of her first year. I mean, you don't feel when you're t- when she's talking and starring shit, and she's already, you know, she's already dropped Drew, the person who brought her on, and all that. I feel like Sonia is. Is at least it, she feels like she belongs there. She doesn't feel like an add-on. Movie. Yeah. So she came on. Sonia came on. She dropped. She dropped Drew. Yeah. She then she crawled Drew. up Kenya and Candy's butt. Uh-huh. Then she crawled up Sheree and Marlo's butts. Uh huh. And kind of backstabbed Kenya. Yeah. And now Which she's is like Kenya's go-to, right? Like everybody who can interact with Kenya at some point backsteps Kenya. That's Poor her Kenya. That's her uh life's story. <laughs> I know. I know justice for my twirl. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean I love Atlanta because it's just so fun to watch Drew like try so hard and then everybody just like laughs at her. Like that crazy bitch Fatum. Yeah. I wish that she was still on because she is she's like she's like what Marlo used to be. Yeah, she is like a little bit she is like Mar what Marlo used to be and she has that high pitched voice that Heavenly has that mm-hmm. you know that pierces through any other conversation that might yeah. be happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh-huh. even if she's not in frame, you hear her, so the cameraman is forced to focus on her. Yeah. It's it's she's magical. She's magical. We need to But yeah, her she's she was she was she was invited to not return because <laughs> she, because apparently in Blue Ridge she went through Drew's stuff. <laughs> just because she th- she took Drew's purse and hid it, and then was going through it, and Ooh. she was like, "What?" Making Drew like walk around all over the house, look for her bag, and she thought it was hilarious. Um, but then Drew was Ooh. like, "I feel unsafe with well, this." Well, Kathy person. did the same thing to um, Kyle, and That's everybody right. said, "Laugh, laugh, ha ha." <laughs> but what? Fatum cannot do that. <laughs> crazy, crazy as Fatum. <laughs> I miss her. She's nuts. Yeah, I mean, she's she's just nuts enough to be interesting. In it's the like, show. I like means that like they had the Marlo, they had that bitch Yovana from Clark. They yeah, had- <laughs> that bitch Yovana. Yes. <laughs> you know, we need that. Like, bef- know. you know, before Atlanta that- needs it. Atlanta needs it because. Some of the old, uh, the old, older players, not by mm-hmm. age, but by, you know, more original players, they uh-huh. already know all the games that each other will play. So they're like be- very carefully tiptoeing around it or getting over it quickly and not, you know, yeah, um, yeah. giving enough. They're not really, um, uh, you know, interacting with them and engaging then yeah. there's the newbies like Marlo, who's trying too too hard to be not the usual Marlo. Like she has more depth, and I do want to hear more about what's happening with her, uh, you know, the kids and all of that. But really, it's it's 
it's tiresome right now for me it's like atlanta it's like oh yeah atlanta is all all over also on that's how i'm watching it because mm. married to medicine is on wow and mm. what i'm watching and then i realize oh yeah atlanta is not done yet so that's mm-hmm. watching atlanta is a secondary thought to married to medicine yeah like i don't understand why we have below deck on like every other night but we don't have family karma back yet or potomac back yet right what the hell is coming back September, middle of September, I heard. But why isn't Family Karma back? Yeah, like I feel like all the weddings happened like two years ago. No, right, yeah, right. What the I hell? Know. And it's like they must be getting ready for you know, in other in other franchises, they would be getting ready for a divorce. In this one, they probably have a kid by now. Yeah, it's nonsense. <laughs> the aunties would have made them have a kid. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, okay, well, let's talk about Rahazas of Beverly Hills first. Um, I didn't record last week because... What? I didn't feel like it. Oh. You were supposed to be on. I you know. You fell asleep. I was at Rails. I came yeah, back you were that. You were You were trying to... You were at the wrong location for the <laughs> right party or whatever it was. <laughs> the rehearsal. Rehearsal dinner. Where was it? Some other place. It was a place next to my house. Oh, um, you could have looked over your window. <laughs> I could have been like, "Yoo hoo!" I could have been like Patrick from um, Old Lady Gang and been like, "Yeah, you could rent out my driveway to park here." <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I'll do ballet. The, you could have seen the nest of a hair from from your kitchen. I know. No, that was. A, I don't think the nest that was, was the there wedding. at the rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, yeah. So so then. Everybody, all this stuff started happening with Teresa's wedding. And I was just like, I don't have time to record. Um, anyway, all this stuff started happening with Teresa's wedding. And mm. I was just like so overwhelmed. I was like, I don't feel like recording. And honestly, like last week, Beverly Hills, not a lot happened. And the whole conversation with like Crystal and the way the conversation about Crystal and the way they started talking about her eating disorder, yeah. I thought was so fucking disturbing that I was like, I know that if I start talking about it, it's going to end up making me cry again. Oh, and I didn't want to deal with that. I know. I'm I'm fine now, but I, like, these are, the, I know, I know the, the thing is, the shtick is that nobody is a good person on Bravo. Mm-hmm. But these people are, as, the thing that's really annoying about Beverly Hills women and specifically these women is that they're mm-hmm. not good people and they put on the front like they are concerned and that is really, really frustrating because you can literally see the cackling in Kyle Richards' face when right? she's doing this shit. And Kyle and Rinna, you can see it. It's like yeah. they get off of it. And Kyle especially. Kyle and Mauricio too. They are Mauricio. like getting... Oh, yeah. Mauricio is getting your ew, ew, ew by the day. Yes. He's turning into a creepy old man. He's, you know what? In the words of Nini Lee, you have to stay out of woman's business. Okay. Right? I don't need you piping in from the corner, Mauricio. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And how about yeah. you stop ogling Dorit, who does look amazing? <laughs> or ranking women's body. Like, what if PK and Mauricio ranking the women? Like, who, who would you? Like what? It was so weird. It was so fucking creepy. There was like nothing uh, nice about it. If if uh, my first of all, if if one of my husband, one of my friends' husbands asked my cu- husband that question, he would be like, "We're not engaging in this conversation. Are you nuts? Mm-hmm. What is wrong with you?" My husband would silently slide away from that person and come and yeah. just me like, "Let's get out. I this <laughs> yeah. place is creepy. That guy is creepy. Save me." That's how he would be. <laughs> yes. Okay, but all right. So they last week. That's basically all that happened. Rena got drunk and screamed at everyone. So Rena's antics this episode and last episode, she blames on grieving. Okay, can I say something? And yeah, if you think say. this is inappropriate, you should take it out of the podcast okay. because you know I don't have a filter, <laughs> and I sometimes don't know how to gauge public reaction. But you might get canceled. I laughed my way through the entire scene of Rena crying. Me too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's disclaimer. Okay. Let's disclaim. I'm not taking that out. <laughs> let's disclaimer this. Okay. Rina, Rina's mother passing is very sad. It oh, is very, I very love, sad. I loved her mother. Lois, Lois was, was the best thing that happened to Lisa Rina. 
Okay. Lisa Rinna is probably the not the best thing that happened to Lois. That's how I feel about it. Yes. Lois okay. is the best thing that happened to Lisa Rinna. She was mm. the most excited that she was the most fun part of Lisa. She mm. was so sweet. Lisa Anything was the somehow- good in Lisa is probably came from Lois. Exactly. So Lois love her. So sad that she died the way she died. It's very tragic. All of those things are true. But when Lisa Rinna is crying at that table, here's the thing. I don't know if these women are just Botoxed to the oh, nines right. so hard that right. they need to contort their face like, like a pretzel to get one single tear to come out. Nothing came out. Lisa Rinna's tear for the bunny moment was bigger <laughs> and more significant than anything that came out of her face yesterday when she was crying over her mom. Yes, thank you. I agree. And that's the thing. Like, It was like, what is she doing? I was like, literally, like, is she crying? Is that crying? Like, is she an actress? She couldn't cry? Like, it was like what is bad, happening? What it you- was bad soap opera stuff. Yeah. And then all of the others were either shocked or they were also crying. But even them, each one of them had one tear each. Like, they couldn't, like, none of them. And to think that... Kyle, anytime you mention a mom, you know how Kyle yeah. gets, oh, my mom, too. And she immediately, yeah, yeah. even Kyle didn't cry. Yeah. Kathy Kyle was just cried. like, hmm. Huh? Kathy cried. Kathy cried. But again, one tear. Like, everybody went into the corner like Candace <laughs> Dillard and just, like, tabbed over there and just wiped one tear off. You know I'm going to argue. Like, is that this Candace a Botox li- effect? I, I'm going to argue that we've seen more tears out of Candace Dillard in her tenure in Potomac than we've seen come out of Lisa Rinna's eyeballs in that scene. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For like sure. I have a for ton sure. of, I have a ton of sympathy and empathy for her when it comes to losing her parent because yeah. I am yeah. slowly in the process of losing my parent. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but it's gonna happen mm-hmm. one of these days because he's mm-hmm. very ill. You've lost a parent. Mm-hmm. Like I know that this is an extremely sad thing and i know that yeah. you can you can mismanage your grief grief yes but this woman just sat around and talked casually over wine about yeah. crystal's eating disorder right. and how she needs to go and get help right professional help and why is she posting about it on instagram but then not doing anything about it mm-hmm. why is she sitting she around and talking up. about sh- and then dorit saying she throws up on camera Yes. And then oh my God. Erica acting so shocked by it. Meanwhile, she was just giving Crystal tips on how to perform other side bulimia. Yeah. So it's like all you women are sitting around acting like the rules don't apply to you and acting like the sympathy is only reserved for you. Yeah. We are only allowed to have feelings of sympathy and empathy when you are vulnerable. But right. when anybody else is vulnerable, it's met with cynicism. It's met with critique. It's met with judgment. It's met with like, mm, I don't know, like what is really, what is this really about? Like even her right. snapping at Sutton and being like, why did you do it? Why did you do that? Why did you come? Why did you come to? Um, why did you come to Garcelle's defense about the sauce? Blah blah blah. All this stuff. It's like, well, why do you do anything that you do on right. this show? Why did you do what you did to Denise? How about that? Right, right, right. What did you? Why did you do what you did to Lisa Rinna when she was mourning her brother? And Lisa her mother? Vanderpump. Yeah, Vanderpump. Sir, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. What? That doesn't matter. And. The point, the person who brought it up is Kyle. Kyle, yes. the shitster, who thinks that she's executive producing the show. And Sutton and Garcelle said, no, we are right. Dorit, in fact, even corroborated that. But, you know, Kyle wasn't enough for Kyle. That wasn't, wasn't enough for Kyle. And she made a shit show of Dorit's charity dinner, basically. Yes. Exactly. That was horrible. That was horrible. With Melissa Estridge <laughs> behind the table, behind the curtain, or wherever she was sitting. The poor woman. <laughs> she was like, do not come to my window. I will <laughs> not wait on the side of the moon. Okay? She must have been like, what the fuck did I sign up for? <laughs> She's like, this British weirdo, boy George's friend, somehow <laughs> wrangled me into doing this 
She got dazzled right. by PK's new teeth. That's what happened. <laughs> like she figured, she found out that PK was no longer homeless because he got better, good teeth. Wait. Also, when Dari is talking about homeless, not toothless, and she says Sharon Stone is on the board, and Sharon Stone used to be my neighbor, and Sharon Stone told me to get involved. I was thinking to myself, like, well, Dari, we know that PK had bad teeth, and we know that you guys have financial issues. So were you guys about to be homeless and toothless? <laughs> right. Is that why she like, so did you <laughs> did you did you get those new, that new teeth through that charity? Is that why you are doing this? <laughs> Diana is like. I grew back my wisdom teeth. Ma'am, I don't know what the hell she's talking about ever. <laughs> what, what she, she says the thing Diana, and then she's like, Diana, get her check breath. your molars. Maybe, maybe your dentist, for charity dentist, took out your molars instead of your wisdom teeth. And I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Kathy didn't say anything about how she <laughs> has experience doing dental work. Maybe that's why Kathy was so excited about this. The, I forgot all about that. <laughs> Kathy was Kathy was an aspiring dentist. Oh my god! <laughs> like, like there's probably somebody homeless out there who Kathy mm. Hilton once did dental work for, and mm. that is why they are toothless. Yeah, yeah. Homeless, yeah. not toothless. And then but, this guy Jay Grossman yeah. apparently casually has a bunch of kids that he doesn't know. Like, what? is he? It wasn't there a Netflix? I have to look it up. But wasn't there a Netflix a thing about somebody who like was like had min- donated and had like a hundred kids or something like that? Yes, I don't think he's a guy. But there's also a Law and Order SVU episode. I remember yes. this because John Stamos. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, that was a good episode. It was such a good episode. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, is this that guy? Like, what? His is name is Grossman. He's a Grossman. <laughs> that is great. Exactly. <sighs> exactly. Oh, my God. So many connections. But I was thinking, like, you know, I'm not being anti-dentite or anything, but this <laughs> is so- <laughs> This whole dentist, homeless, but not too toothless. Stop. You almost, I almost died. Okay. The water what? almost went down the wrong pipe. I know, okay. I'm forgetting what I was going to say. You, you laugh so much. <laughs> I don't mean to be in. <laughs> I love that phrase from Seinfeld. So good. I use it all the time that I don't like that. De- I don't like going to the dentist. I'm anti-dentite. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Kathy was the one who was very excited about this Um you know, and so I hope Kathy donated mm-hmm. a lot of money and made Sharon Stone happy. It's just that is a perfect charity for Kathy to get involved in, not for yeah. Dorit. This is the Kathy. Kathy could have like she could go volunteer, she could put a little, you know, thread into people's tooth, pull it out, close the door, pull it up, pull it, do some yeah. tooth pulling. Yeah, she could do all of that and enjoy it thoroughly. She um, didn't know who Ellen Melissa Etheridge was. She's like, who's that? Yeah, she's. And apparently, I mean, she was on Watch What Happens oh my Live. God, did you and... watch the clip? It's no. Okay, Arthi, it's horrible. Really? It's horrible. Oh my god! They ask her who Lizzo is, and she says, "Precious." <sighs> oh. And Crystal's sitting next to her, and Crystal's everybody loses it. Yeah, Crystal's like, "No, it's it's because Lizzo is precious to Kathy." It's because no. Lizzo is precious to Kathy. No. She's like really trying to help her out. Yeah. And it was like Judge Mathis, the the judge. Yeah. With the, he has was a reality TV show. His his son was behind the bar with his fiance. <gasps> okay. And these are two black men. And everybody was just like losing it. Like it's not, it's not, it's just, it's so bad. Yeah. It's uh, not funny. It's very yeah. racist. Like, yeah. And like, but she, also, why is Andy asking her these questions? He's like, he's also setting her up, right? Exactly. Kathy it's like you know who, there in her age too. I don't. I, I think she is. Yes, she's racist, but also she is clueless. Yes. So it's like you're not just racist. You're now becoming senile, and then yeah. now you're a senile racist. And right. it's like, it's just bad. She's on social media today saying that she didn't have her glasses on. Her vision is really bad, and she like can't tell people she's probably going to be like i'm face blind like brad pitt like she's probably going to say some bullshit like that but 
It was Wait, really Brad bad. Pitt said he's face blind? What's face blind? <laughs> Can I claim it? Because I don't recognize half the people that I meet. Yes. So that's the thing. Okay. He says that he can't remember people's like faces so that he mm-hmm. could pretend like that's why he doesn't remember people. It's because he can't remember their faces. What? Um. Mm-hmm. Anyway, like, so did Kathy say the shit she said in Aspen? Yeah, probably. But like, none of this is surprising. It's just like, it's weird for Bravo to take this person who is pretty beloved right now, right? Mm-hmm. And like, they love Kathy Hilton. They love having her on the show. It's like so fun. They like Paris mm-hmm. Hilton's mother's on the show. Like it's such a big deal. And then you have her come on and sure they're not pulling her. They're not forcing her to be racist, but they're putting her in a situation she where she could possibly say something extremely inappropriate. I mean, mm-hmm. she when she met Cherie for the first time, she was like, oh my God, how long has it been since we met? <clears throat> and she was like, like, we never met. We've never met because you probably mm-hmm. confused her with another black woman. So right. it's like- I'm not surprised. I'm also confused because I think Bravo thinks it's funny, but I think for a lot of black people, a lot of people of color, it's very Mm -hmm. triggering to be like, okay, yeah, this white lady is confusing one black woman with another black woman. And we've all been there before where we are interchangeable as people of color with other people of color. Don't be on TV. You are in situations like this and you shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think you do this shit all the time. I mean, Kyle called a woman who's probably been working with Kathy for, like, 20 years that lady. Yes. So, like, of course, these are the people that they are. Um, Okay, so this this eating disorder and Erica's drinking thing, it's, like, it's wild because – like I said, I think that they're more ups- – they're, they seem to be more upset about the fact that she's o- she's open about her eating disorder and then not doing anything about it than, right. than Erica getting drunk and just saying – like, it's weird. It's like Erica's doing all the things that are inappropriate and mm-hmm. acting like somebody who cannot who – is, who is abusing right. their right. medication and alcohol right. and acting out and being offensive and being hurtful – but because she says, I don't have a problem, it's okay. Right. But because Crystal, who, when she meets them, is lovely and pleasant, but also mm-hmm. says, yes, I personally struggle yeah. with my eating disorder, right. that's more annoying to them. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. I, I don't, don't understand. understand why. No, but I don't even understand why it's annoying to them. Why? It, you, of you, course. There is more. So uh, Erica's, uh, Erica's claim is that know that Sutton and Garcelle and they are not really concerned about her drinking they just want to come for her yeah uh but somehow what they do with Crystal is not about it's all it's about concern and yes. it's not about just coming for Crystal and using you know using her as a storyline right yeah Mm-hmm. Well, why would one be concerned and the other not? Mm-hmm. And because as, it's the same thing with sympathy and empathy for Rena. Right, it's like right. it's only apply it only applies to them. When right. it's anybody else, it's different. It's always yeah, a different. Marcel has a reason for bringing it up because she wouldn't have brought it up if you didn't go after her son like that. So you caused her son, yeah, yeah. You're 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 losing your shit because of drinking is affecting Garcelle's life, which is yeah. why she's bringing it up and being concerned. So she should be concerned about it. Yeah. And you should be glad that she's only concerned about it and not mad about it. That's right. And mm-hmm. I don't think they understand that difference because Chris, with Crystal, both Garcelle and, uh, and Sutton are not bringing it up with Crystal until... Rena and everybody else brought it up. They're like, yes. it's Crystal's issue. This is mm-hmm. private. Mm-hmm. We'll wait for her to bring it up in a group setting and then we'll talk to her about it. But we are not going to bring it up mm-hmm. because she hasn't brought it up. And what is happening with her is not affecting us and our kids. Yeah. But what what um, uh, what Erica is doing is affecting their party she's misbehaving in their party at their charities in in front of the kids and accosting their kids you don't get to have a good time because you've had a lot of bad time in the past in the uh, near past and so you you want to loosen up you don't get to loosen up at the cost of my child yep Mm -hmm. and you should be fucking uh, you should be fucking glad that i don't bring that up and instead i'm couching it as concern for your mental health 
Exactly. Yeah. Oh. And then for even last episode when Erica was like, oh, you know, you you really – you always clean up Sutton's mess. Well, what do you think everybody's been doing for you, Erica, for the last two seasons? Right? You what guys are, you are all about? Keep- Cleaning up each other's mess all the time. Exactly, exactly. Not just, not just Erica's mess. Dorit is cleaning up uh, Kyle's mess. Kyle is making a mess in everybody else, and then pretending to clean up too. It's annoying. Oh, Kyle okay. is the most annoying. I hate Kyle so much. So much. She's oh, the worst. I hate her. Um, a quick I note about wait for her to be off of Beverly Hills. I hope she get doesn't get brought back on, and I hope her Hulu show sucks yeah i hope so too i have a quick question okay so this there's a scene about with diana and asher and they're talking about the next time that they're going to try to have another baby Mm -hmm. it was the weirdest most loveless exchange i've ever seen in my life it was so weird they sat on opposite ends of the couch talking Mm -hmm. about when the next time she would like to try to have another baby mm-hmm. it's they're obviously talking I have about a like feeling that yeah. the dynamic so there's some panels between asher and diana's relationship and sergio and caroline stanbury's relationship mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. the younger men not as well off married to very well off women older women mm-hmm. who have um older kids yeah and one of them wants more kids. Diana wants more. Stanbury doesn't care. But the younger men don't seem to have a lot of say in what's happening. So it's a different kind of dynamic where these are the, they are the Gretchen Rossi of this relationship. That's right. Yes. Right. So they don't have much to say. They are supposed to look pretty and be there as emotional support and not really have any contribution. So I don't think Asher has any, I think the way their relationship works or the way it is or, uh, arranged or there there must have been a prenup and everything. I think the way it works is that Asher has no say. They have, probably have embryos and she's going to have them whether Asher is around or not. Well, so he's but, like, but okay, these, let me well, listen to you talk because all he cares about is how she's going to fund his music business. That's right. That's Easy really his baby. Yeah. So Sergio, baby. Sergio and Stanberry, at least I see some love between them. Like I think that Sergio drives Stanberry crazy, but yeah. I think that there's like a genuine love and from, appreciation from she has. Sergio's part. Yeah. Definitely from Sergio and definitely even though she even though he like gets under her skin, I think she enjoys his antics as mm-hmm. annoying as they are. Yeah. Right? He's the equivalent of a gay uh, gay friend for her, but with benefits of sex <laughs> she's like right so, so but with asher and diana There's that was so such a cold me. conversation about the fact that she had this very traumatic miscarriage and when she thinks she's going to start again and them talking about it almost felt like a like a schedule between assistants right of like, right. Yeah, like he's it, her assistant and she's telling she's going over the business plans Yes. yes. It was very it's like strange. an office meeting, like staff meeting. That's how it felt. It was. It felt like yeah. a meeting between like Erica and Mikey. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But even that has more, uh, I think there's more emotions there than this one. I think Di- I don't see any emotions in Diana other than she's, she reminds me a little bit of Melania Trump. I don't know why. Yeah, she it's does. Like she has a, she has a, a constant smile plastered on her face and you don't really know what she's thinking, what's real. And she keeps talking about how she's such a badass, how she's very rough, how yeah. she is like so yeah. strong. I don't see that anywhere. What do you no. mean? You mm-hmm. are not a street fighter, ma'am. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, she's like, I'm confrontational. That's my fit. You know, that's something I'm an expert at. No, you cried because Sutton told you to stay in your lane at a dinner. What are you talking about that you're confrontational? And then you've been passive aggressive to her the whole time afterwards. Passive aggressiveness is not confrontational. No, it's the exact opposite. But it's not. Yeah, you're afraid of confrontation. What are you talking about? 
It's so I weird. don't get it. I don't. And she makes it a point on every episode. She comes claims that she used to beat up somebody. She was she had a hard life in Serbia. She Bosnia. She had this. She had that. But I don't see any evidence of it in this Diana. She's like, oh, he softened me up. I don't see you soft either. I see you cold and detached. Yeah, and the thing is, like, okay, I know that she was poor until she was 20, it sounds yeah. like. And then right. after 20, she got filthy, filthy rich. Now, yeah. here's the thing. While I believe that your childhood very much molds you and we're all, like, working mm-hmm. through our inner child shit, right. if you've been wealthy for a majority of your life and mm-hmm. you pre- basically grew up as a rich person, you mm-hmm. you can't really claim the I was rough and tumble teenager anymore, mm-hmm. in my opinion, okay? Yeah. Like I can't, like it, it's just I don't I I don't I can't stand I, her. Can I think whatever, but I don't see evidence of it. I don't, I don't see, see any evidence effect of it. Of it. Yeah. You can claim whatever because I have you know everybody has trauma from childhood that you cannot put a timeline on it and say you have to get over it. But at the yeah. same time, I think uh, what I'm saying is any of her behavior and whatever she's doing with her husband in her private with her kids. I don't see any warmth. I None. see something very artificial. Even when she's dealing with the kids, it's very artificial. I don't find any warmth in how she deals with. I thought Yolanda had more warmth than she yes. does. And yeah. I, I used to think Yolanda is very cold. Oh, yeah. I love Yolanda. <laughs> We never talked about this. I loved Yolanda. Her oh, clear no. fridge and her lemon trees and her hello, my love, and telling her daughter to just eat four almonds and shut the fuck up. <laughs> See, yeah. back then I liked Yolanda because I didn't know that I had an e- active eating disorder. So I was like, so yeah, whatever. Like- she told her daughter to stop eating. What's the big yeah. deal? <laughs> like my, I wish my mother would tell me to do that. No, my mom tells me to do that all the time. I just don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's talk about speaking of Stanbury. Let's go to Dubai. What do you think about what's going on in Dubai? The big things that happened in the last two episodes is this like continuation of fighting between Sarah and Okay. Caroline as much Brooks. as I love Sarah in the first episode, I hate Sarah. No. <laughs> I hate her. Massive nosedive. Like oh. the fastest nosedive. Like you are oh. such an immature, spoiled brat who has no idea she's just spewing uh, you know self-help book you know whatever snippet toxic positivity toxic positivity without any um context or even an understanding she thinks she if she says that and she comes in like just because sarah just because you think you went through some trauma and you might have and you overcame it does not mean that every woman went through the same trauma or e- a- trauma at all just yeah. because just because caroline brooks says that my mother was militant doesn't mean that she's against militancy you know militant yes. upbringing yeah. You, that's not a trauma for her to get over. So stop saying you can get over it. You can grow out of it when nobody is complaining that they are traumatizing. The only person who has actually talked about having had childhood trauma is um, uh, Chanel. Yes. And no one is paying attention to her. Sarah, Sarah could talk to her. Sarah did talk to her, but Sarah preached to her. Yes. But she is the one with the real trauma that she talks about. But... Caroline Brooks says Caroline Brooks went through a bad divorce. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. her husband cheated, was probably mean, was probably and abusive. abused her. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. But that's not the trauma that you are talking about, Sarah. You're talking about her childhood trauma that she didn't have. That's you right. had childhood drama. Don't project into other people. And she keeps saying every time she has this authoritative way of talking, like obviously aristocrat, yes. privilege. So she is talks about it as I'm going to give her an opportunity to apologize. That's I'm right, going to yeah. give her an opportunity to make mm-hmm. up for that. Mm-hmm. So it's almost as if I'm granting you the opportunity to apologize to me. So you should be thankful. She's so full of shit. Like I'll never forget oh. that she was talking about therapy and she said, I've done all kinds of therapy. I've done hypnotherapy, radiotherapy. I was like, why did you get radiation? <laughs> no. Why did you get radiation, Sarah? Like, what do you mean you had radiotherapy? Huh? I don't know. I don't know. She's crazy. She's and then not- she she. I hate Ill the way she's and she uh, thinks she's well informed. Yeah, she's she sits place. she sits on a chair in her confessional with her arms like 
out and like mm-hmm. with her body back in this like very aristocratic like mm-hmm. I know it all shit yeah. like she's 30 like not to, like look I'm 37 it's not like she's so much I'm like so old I'm 30 she's 34 it's not about being ageist it's about having the experience and exactly and but she haven't had she, that you have she's 34 years old life yeah, she's 34 years old. She's filed two bankruptcies. The only thing we've ever heard about her is that she had a business. She started doing her business when she was 14 years old. She tells the same damn story every other episode. She talks about how she yes, sold something. If my dad when she was-, was an aristocrat in Dubai, I would also. Yeah, I exactly. I all the money in the world to do whatever I wanted at 14. And then she talks about her divorce. Last episode, she said that she got married when she was 25 or 26. And then she was divorced. And the guy... She did everything for the guy and he didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I don't know which marriage she's talking about because in 2019, she got married a second time to this dork from New Jersey that I (laughs) know about. Uh, My friend's hairdresser went for her wedding. That's the dork. Yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't him. (laughs) It was this Pakistani guy from like this area who went to the UAE, conned her into getting married, was like a complete con artist, but ended up getting some money out of her and business opportunities. And then they ended up getting a divorce. I only know this because my friend's hairdresser, my friend knows this family. I know a couple of people that know this family. And my friend's hairdresser went to Dubai for the wedding. But (gasps) Listen, Listen you getting all the boots on the ground in boots on the ground, baby. But like, yeah. my point is, like, Sarah, for somebody who sits around and talks about, like, you need to be positive, honey, and like, you need to be kind, and you know, your traumas and your triggers and all this stuff, you don't ever hear her talk about any of her own stuff, right? She doesn't and then, talk about what trauma she and then, and then she never talks about her own triggers, right? She, no. On Instagram, on Twitter, she tweeted that Chanel Ayan was a Debbie Downer because um, she always brings people down with all of her stuff. But when she tries to talk to people, then when Sarah tries to give Chanel advice, then she's preachy. Get the hell out of here. I'm like, so you call you ask Chanel to share about her childhood. Mm-hmm. Now you're calling her a Debbie Downer. Go fuck yourself. OK. Right. And then. As a PhD, ma'am, I haven't even talked to you about this. Wait. As a PhD a holder. PhD? No, no, listen oh, to me. I have one. As a doctor. Yes. As a doctor with a proper mm-hmm. doctorate. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about somebody with an honorary doctorate in women's empowerment, whatever the fuck that means? Some honorary doctorates are are worth it. Some others are not. Some honorary doctorates are to honor somebody for having having done the work, but not having the degree. So you give them the doctorate. She no. What is what that? If, okay, but she got what is what is it? What is it? But what do you think about her calling herself Dr. Sarah Al Madani? <laughs> I have uh strong feelings about it and I think she shouldn't call herself that just as much as I shouldn't say I'm a doctor on a flight. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot save you from a heart attack. I can tell you why it happened. I can give you, I can do a blood analysis and I can tell you why it happened. I can give you all of that, but I cannot save your ass. <laughs> so. Sarah can't even do that. Yeah. She can't even do that. She cannot save she your ass. Says she's a doctor on the flight. I bet oh. she says that. 100%. Right? 100%. Okay. She's probably like if someone's having a heart attack, she's probably saying think positive to them. <laughs> And then you when they're doing from this trauma. Okay, this stupid like trip they went on, right? It was fine. It looked fabulous. Mm-hmm. It looked lovely. But then Caroline Stanberry is so excited to take them to a wave thing that's at like Great Wolf Lodge and the Kalahari Resorts. I was like, this is this is the Wait, big surprise. I had a question about that. They went on a trip, but the trip was within UAE, right? They went to yes. a place within UAE. But yes. then when Caroline Brooks was talking to her son, she's like, I just woke up, but uh, call me when you come back from school. So did she just wake up and it's uh, late in the middle of the day to give, leave a message? I was like, is there a time difference? What is this? No, what is no I think she just woke up late. Oh, okay. That yeah. confused me a little bit. I'm like, your son is in school. What do you do? What, how, yeah. how is this a time difference? <laughs> but then, um, yeah, the wave runner thing that was like, 
weird. And it's like, okay, I can understand how you have to have an indoor ski slope because it doesn't yes. go there. But I'm guessing that they don't have high waves there either in the water or they cannot have outdoor stuff like that. And so they have to have it indoor for... But it was outdoors. It was outdoors, but it wasn't like in a... In the public water? I don't know. It was was such a strange setup. But she acted as if she was going to take them like zip lining and jumping off a waterfall. I was like, she was like, these girls are going to lose their mind. They're going to lose it. It's going to be so fun to watch them fall. I'm like, nothing happened. That's the part that is bothering me from the beginning. Caroline Stanbury keeps presenting parts of Dubai that should not be as amazing to her because (laughs) I am sure she has actually done the real thing. She has done the real skiing in the Alps. She's probably, you know, surfed in the best surfs around Hawaii or wherever, Australia, wherever. So I feel like she must have experienced the real thing. So why is she being so enthusiastic and almost she's like she's like she's like gushing about these you know it almost feels like these are like um not even you know instead of going like you go and shop at the at the mall here and you uh, you shop at Saks Fifth Avenue but now you're gushing about a strip mall yes it's like it's like if um if like on Potomac you know (laughs) Karen was like, I'm going to take you to a, a fabulous, a fabulous place where you could buy everything you want. Everything in the world is available to you. And she just like takes you to White Marsh Mall. Yes. <laughs> but also that would happen with Karen. And it would be exactly what Robin and Giselle expect from her too. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We are going. But with Caroline Stanbury, I'm like, why are you gushing about these experiences, which are nothing? The experience of her kids going into the basement of this hotel and looking through the thing and looking at the guy swimming over and putting like yeah. welcome Stanbury and your kids and I'm like so that guy can see into the bedroom and he could Thank be you. there lurking yeah it was and the guy was like, there why in front are you of the bathroom. amazed by an underground like pe- I, pe- I am pe- not an, an underwater peep I'm like, show I'm shocked I'm an shocked under- that she is gushing about this I'm gushing about an underwater peep show yeah. <laughs> what is so great? And she's like, oh, we're going to this place in whatever the place was that they she took them to. And she's like, it's going to be so good. And then all the women are so excited about going. I was like, are you not allowed to go there by the well, regime? I mean, and is that why you're or is it well, too expensive here, for even for you guys to go there? Well, here's the thing. The place was beautiful. It was a beautiful right. and place. And she said it was $50,000 a day. So maybe... It is too expensive even for the ladies to go. So this is like. Yeah. And then for the women to be able to like bike to the beach. like it, uh, And the other thing you should know in um, the UAE is these islands that they go to are man-made islands. Right. These are not natural islands. So right. it's which is like reason 157 for why I am never into the idea of visiting Dubai is because I feel like everything is fake anyway. Yeah. So like. I think I get it that the whole show is being kind of allowed because they're using it as tourism promotion, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But it was just so ridiculous to watch Caroline Stanberry gush over a wave runner, like a wave right. machine. And then All the rooms, just, the rooms weren't anything special. They were fine. But then yeah. Sarah also, she gets on there and she's like, I'm very adventurous and I'm very rebellious. But, you know, this was a completely like a lifetime of an experience or something like that. I was like. What? what? My kids do this every single time we go to Kalahari. What are you talking about? <laughs> they have us at the Jersey Shore. Like, what is this? And that's the point. It's not that it's... Yes, if somebody in the UAE or even in India, if a common person said this was something yes. that was amazing, yes. you would understand because they wouldn't have access to it. These women are rich and they travel all the time. So they must have seen and experienced all this elsewhere. Yeah, it, but here they're acting as if that's the best thing ever that they have ever done. It's kind of weird. The dr- driving through the desert that um, she did with Caroline um, Brooks. Yeah. And she goes and she does the picnic and she's talking to her. It, it was like, okay, so you go into the desert and you ride your 
bike. Or like whatever. that I thought was cool because ATVing yeah. in the desert is a thing. It's really yeah. fun, right? Yeah. And it was cute that they did a little picnic. I thought that was right. fine. But just this wave runner was truly one of the most perplexing things I've ever seen in my life because she really, really acted like it was going to blow their minds. Mm. And it was so basic. It was yeah. the most basic thing I've ever seen. Okay. Caroline Brooks is really confusing me because when they're playing Never Have I Ever, mm-hmm. her lie is that she has three kids, right? Her three things she says is, I have three kids, I dated a president-elect, and I got a multi-million dollar su- settlement from my divorce. Yeah. And her lie is that she has three kids. So she did get a multi-million dollar settlement from settlement. divorce. But then she's been talking this whole time about how she hasn't gotten a dime from her ex-husband in order to keep her son right so that's why and when they said oh the three kids is the lie she was like grimacing and she was making she made a face right i literally felt like she was gonna say no i do have other kids and they just are not here yeah i don't know if they were doing two lies and a truth i don't know even the other one i thought they were like what is the lie? And I was like, okay, wait, they must be doing two lies and a truth because they're trying I to think, figure out. Yeah, I think maybe they were too drunk because what's her name? Lisa says that she was a stripper, yeah, something else, and that she has her clitoris pierced. And yeah. then the That's clitoris the pierced truth. was the – yeah, yeah. Truth. She said that, oh, I, I slept with 10 guys or something yeah. like that. Like, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so maybe truth, that's what it was. Yeah, it's – Two lies and a truth is what they were playing. Two lies and a truth is what they ended up playing. Because I was like, that's right. The Lisa Milan thing is the one that I was like, she wouldn't say that on TV. Why would she say that? That has to be a lie. Yeah. Even if it is true, if it was true, she wouldn't say that. Yeah, exactly. That was weird, yeah. Um, And then Nina Ali is the dullest person I've ever (sighs) seen on television. I mean, you know who she reminds me of? In like the way, in her mannerisms sometimes, in the way she talks. I know you're not, maybe it's crazy. She kind of reminds me of Kathy Wakili. Really? Yeah, in just how dull she is, but she really thinks like she's trying. Like, she really really thinks- Kathy rode a bike to sell her (laughs) canoe. No. (laughs) Right, at least Kathy did that. Nina's not even baking or anything. Yeah. I think she's so dull. She's so boring. She is. But the queen of the show is obviously Chanel Leon. And apparently <sighs> currently the queen of making her rounds all over all of the housewives. Oh my and God, showing up I was so surprised wedding. to see her in Teresa's wedding pictures. I was like, oh, look yeah. at that. Our, Chanel, our little Chanel made it in there. Did she bring her a goat? I want to know if she gave to Teresa <laughs> you, a goat. What did you give Teresa? <laughs> what, do you give to her, what do you give a woman who has everything? Give her a goat. <laughs> Uh, but Chanel and Stanberry have this like fight at the end of it, but it's just them being drunk, I think, mm-hmm. and not yeah. listening to each other and talking over each I other. I actually think Stanberry and Chanel could get along very well because Chanel has this self deprecating uh, way of talking that is very similar to what Stanberry does. And she, they, yeah. they, Chanel can entertain Stanberry enough for Stanberry to like her. Because yes. Stanbury, all Stanbury is looking for is entertainment from everybody else, right? Exactly. So I think Stanbury does just doesn't seem to like her for some other reason. Something about her annoys her. And yeah. she just doesn't know what. And she is not talking to her. But I think Chanel is the, she's the nicest and she's, she's such an open book. When she has an yes. issue, she addresses it right away. Yeah. She brings it up in a very nice manner. She tells people why something hurt her. When Caroline Brooks says, oh, take your tongue out of someone's Lisa's ass. And she's like, but Chanel is also very literal. So she's like, but I've never done that. I've, my my <laughs> tongue isn't there. And then so she also, you know, talks to her very nicely, tells her why she's hurt. And yeah, up with her and gives whoever hurt her. She forgives them. Exactly. And she moves yeah. on. I actually lo- love Chanel as a person, literally as a person, not even as on the show. And on the show, she's wild with her fashion and showing up in all the couture yeah. and walking through the souk in her big gown and sweeping it up. It. She's just, it's over the top, 
it looks, but the per- person inside is pretty genuine. That's what I like about her. Yeah, exactly. And I don't understand yeah. what the issue is. Like, I don't think that Nina should be on the show because she's very boring. Like, I mm-hmm. think that if they were to revamp this group, either I need Nina to give me more information about mm-hmm. her or yeah. I need Sarah to give me more information. And I thought it was interesting that Sarah, when she goes and wears a wetsuit, Caroline says, well, you're not allowed, right? You're not allowed to wear it. And mm-hmm. Sarah says, yeah, I'm not allowed. But then in confessional, she's like, oh, you know, a typical Emirati woman, most of us are conservative and we wear this because we want to. It's a choice. And there's a lot of Emirati women who wear what they want. They would wear a bathing suit, but it's my choice. But it's not her choice because the way that she was talking about it with Stanberry, Mm -hmm. I was like, you're a phony and you're a liar and we really Mm -hmm. need you to show up with who you are. Because again, Sarah Madani was engaged to an Italian actor who is in like softcore porn yeah. and and we're supposed to just talk about how you used to sell scrunchies or whatever when you were 14? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank she's, you. She's, she's, there's a lot of fakeness and she walks a very tight line and I'd like to know that line. If you are truly a rebel, tell me your constraints. Yeah. Tell me what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do and how you're still rebelling. You're not done rebelling. That's the point. Yeah. You're still rebelling and you are hiding behind therapy and all of this to sort of justify what you're doing and empower. You're basically trying to, you know, empower yourself. That's what you're doing and you're not there yet. So shut up. Yeah. You're, you're not up. there yet. You cannot be giving advice. Yeah. Well, any other thoughts about these Dubai and Beverly Hills ladies? I just want to, I just want a, a meeting of, Karen from Potomac and Chanel Ion, and I want cameras there. Yeah, I want them to go for dinner or for drinks or work at the to- at the farm, Karen's farm. I want Chanel to visit Karen at the farm because Chanel's going to be like, I also come from a farm. I know. I also she would have a family that's about milking the goats and farming. Oh my god, they would have so much fun together. She, they She's still in America. So much- yeah, they would have so much fun. I should just go. I should go to Bergen County, find mm-hmm. Chanel, hanging out with Jennifer Aiden, and be like, listen, Chanel, listen, I have a word in with the people, and what the people want is for you to go to Potomac, Maryland, and hang out with Karen. Right. Please. Right. Please, I, I beg of you. Awesome. I think I think even if Dubai gets if Dubai gets canceled, I wouldn't care, actually. I don't care. I yeah, even Lisa same. Milan, I like her, but I don't I'm not compelled to watch mm-hmm. her. Yeah. The only person that I'm compelled to watch is Chanel Ayan. And if she has a show by herself, I would watch that too. Yeah, I agree. I would truly watch Chanel Ayan as a, you know, only show. And I think that Bravo is realizing that Stanbury was their star going in, but Chanel is the star going out. And it's, they're going to, I hope they put a lot of effort in keeping Chanel here. Yeah. He will be the bigger draw at uh, BravoCon for sure. I hope she stays here for that. Um, okay, well, thank you so much for being here. But listen, can you come back so we can talk about Married to Medicine? One yes, day? please. I have a lot of thoughts. Oh, my God. I have so many thoughts. Everybody's wrong. Everybody's right. It's so much. That's why we love Married to Medicine, because everybody's wrong and everybody's right. Okay, I'll just and ask you. I'll ask you. Why is the word? But, okay. <laughs> why is Eugene so mad? Oh, you think it's Eugene. the menopause again? It could be, but it's also that I think Eugene is trying to build back wealth. Yes. From what he was. I think the bankruptcy and all of that was a big hit on his ego, and it was very embarrassing. He handled it well on camera, but I think that's um, that's an embarrassment that he's trying to put behind him. Mm-hmm. and the way for him to build wealth was to flip the house. When yeah. he found an opportunity to make wealth, get uh, get some wealth, he did. So he sees it as a smart move that he made to, you know, create wealth for his family and having um, um, Anila's husband, what's his name again? Karen. Karen come and mock it mm-hmm. is very hurtful. To Eugene, yeah, but then talk about it, Eugene. Huh? Talk about it. 
Then talk about it, Eugene. Yes, tell us. I think Eugene is not quite, and we call him Eugene, but Eugene mm-hmm. is not really um, the kind that wants. He wants. He doesn't want to talk about. It. He didn't want to talk about the bankruptcy either. He was open about it, but the wealth building, he's proud of it, and he just doesn't want to talk about it so much. He yeah. does talk about flipping the house, and they do mention it one once or twice that he uh, like she's now gotten a flipping the house bugs and now she wants to flip this house too and she wants yeah. to flip another house which is fine i think uh, Eugene struggles with toya toya income destroyer as uh, Lori conlin says <laughs> yes yes <laughs> Lori, she calls her toya toya income destroyer but yeah. um eugene has a real struggle with toya and he's doing the best he can. Now, I have to say that Kieran and Anila might be co- might come from some family wealth, some protection, some security that they can yeah. lean on. They have yeah. generationally, they might have been middle class. That gives you some security. But Eugene might not have come from that. So yeah. you, for Eugene to have this wealth, he may be the first in his generation to have this wealth. To have it then almost lose all of it, but then come back from it is something that he's working towards. He doesn't have the privilege of having been in a good starting point to begin with. So he, for him, the struggle is real. For Kieran and Anila, they may not notice that. They may not yeah. notice because they may pay for their house and they overpaid. Who does overpays for the decorations in their house by over a million? Yeah. Their budget exceeded and doubled and exceeded and went over a mil- over three million. That yeah. was just for renovations and building the house. So that is not that does that disposable cash that is sitting for Eugene. Eugene is trying to dig himself out of the financial yeah, mess. You're right. You're right. So for him, it's a very sensitive topic, and for Anila and uh, and uh, you know um, Karen to. They don't realize it. That's why they are not they're not putting themselves in Eugene's shoe. They don't know why Eugene is mad because they don't realize his struggle. So they're just making fun of mocking him for moving houses and moving yeah. away from them. Yeah. And that is hurtful for Eugene. Yeah. But then again, Eugene, you need to talk about it. Okay. I think he might. He might in the future, or he might at the reunion. He might be saving it up for your reunion. But yeah. I'm also mad at Anila and Toya, uh, you know. To, uh, pitting their husbands against each other. Leave the leave Eugene alone. But also, I think Kieran is another one that is trying to get more involved. Like last season, he didn't. He wasn't comfortable with the camera. This season, he seems to be very comfortable with the camera and getting involved. Well, I think it's fine that the husbands are going for each other. But like you know, and like Daddy Damon said, all you guys and your wives made fun of me and my me and my wife. Everybody said so many things about me. I know. <laughs> Daddy Damon can be my ER doctor any day. He's so calming. He's so calming. Yeah, but I would be like, I need you to like pep it up. Like, I, <laughs> I would be like, I'm going to die. Because this die man while, is- you, while you are talking, you are giving instruction to the nurse because you're so calm. Sir, hold off on the Bible verses. I'm dying right now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, I know. But I have thoughts about Heavenly and and also about Jackie and all of them. But great. Well, then come back next Wednesday. Talk to me about it. Them. Okay. Them. Great. Them. Okay. We'll talk to you then. Mm-hmm. I goodbye. Bye. <laughs>
Sarah Gibbs. You may not like the cut of my jib, but that's what you get from Sarah Gibbs. Maria M. Where I'm from, they sing God Save the Queen. So I guess you can call me a god. Jill Walsh. I made it up this hill myself, and I'll kick any jack off. Jesse Willis. I may not run in traffic, but I'll give you a run for your money. Eleanor Manning. I run with a fabulous circle of people, and they're not even on my payroll. John Friedman. Diamonds aren't a girl's best friend. John Friedman is. Sarah Watskins Bilstein. Playtime is over. This mama means business. Laura Zielinski. Whether it's breast pumping or fist pumping, this Jersey girl brings the party. Amanda Agosti. Everything is bigger in Texas, and my heart is no exception. Tracy Masters. When you're the master of your own destiny, no one can ever take you down. Marl Farsi. Reading is fundamental, and in Farsi, the reads are monumental. Tracy Newman. My presence is a gift, so remember the thank you note. Lola Del Rio. Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets, and I get it all. Ade Adedoko. It may look like I'm stirring the pot, but I'm actually just smoking. Deepa Canapoli. Some people say I have secrets, but at least they're not federal indictments. Jada. People are intimidated by my great success and my great ass. Naveen Jonathan. I'll give you the shirt off my back and also my unsolicited opinion. Adil Ibrahim. Some things are too hot to handle, like me and the tea I spill. Trinity Supermania. I have four degrees and eight syllables and zero fucks to give. Beth Bayer. The secret to my success is staying out of your BS. Shannon Anthony. There's no fun in moderation, but there's plenty of shame. Rita Ryan. Don't be fooled by my Midwest charm, because I'm nobody's fool. Brianna Tony. Some people strive for perfection, but I'm already there. And lastly, Tanisha. While others are turning tables, I'm dancing on them.